America has fallen behind in manufacturing. It's hard, it's unsexy, it's financially challenged. But all that is changing right now thanks to geopolitical shifts in production and supply chains. During and following the COVID-19 pandemic, disruptions in food, medicine, and other critical goods led to acute concerns from political leaders and everyday consumers that the products that are needed to sustain our economy could be locked away overseas, either because of a similar health situation or because foreign governments like China and Russia could prevent our access to them. It's a race for self-reliance, and nowhere is that race heating up faster than in the cold vacuum of space. It's a bit of a blast from the past. The space race is the original narrative of the Cold War, with the US and USSR locked in a fight to see who could put a satellite into orbit and a person on the moon. The concern was fundamentally about securities. Who controlled space could control its weaponization, which meant nuclear missile launch platforms. Rudimentary satellites could begin spying on opponents from the sky, ensuring whoever was up in the stars first would have an intelligence gathering advantage that theoretically could turn the fate of the world to their favor. Now, space is opening up beyond governments to private industry, driven by ever lower costs for launching payloads into orbit. Led by SpaceX, the cost of putting a kilogram of payload into low Earth orbit, or LEO, was almost $100,000 just a few decades ago, and now with SpaceX's Falcon Heavy launch vehicle has been estimated as low as $1,000. It's a huge opportunity to build a whole new economy, but to get there, it will take incredible coordination from government and the private sector to catalyze it. Can America build it? And does it even want to? Having manufacturing in the United States is so important. And I think for whatever reason, a lot of people view it as a dirtier job or one that is not as important or as valuable or as sexy in the world today. And I think we need to go and prove people that that's, that's not right. My name is Paul Seebacher. I'm the VP of manufacturing here at Impulse Space. Uh, part of my job is to help build the team and the system that builds all the products that we make here. Impulse Space is an in-space services provider. We're hoping to expand uh, the transportation segment in space. So we want to help other companies deliver their products where they need to go, bring them necessary things, whether that's propellant or power. We want to be able to deliver things that people need and, and take things back whenever they need them. For years, private investors overlooked the companies building out the space economy. For all of their ambition, companies were perceived to be too complicated, niche, and technologically risky to back. And really, who can blame the venture capitalists? In a market flush with capital, why wouldn't a smart investor put their money behind a video game or a social network? It's fun, and you don't have to figure out the minute details of aerospace manufacturing to make an investment judgment. But that's also the story of how America squandered a wide lead in these industries over just the past few decades. We invested in companies that were simple to understand, or private equity deals that squeezed out dollars like lemon juice from the fruit. And it's only now in the past few years that investors are once again taking a longer and deeper look at space and suddenly realizing that the technological and product moats of these companies have the potential to usher in an entire new GDPs going forward. Now with software multiples massacred on Wall Street, people are suddenly waking up and realizing that backing yet another video sharing app probably isn't the route to riches. And the smart money is looking at the companies breaking down barriers to the cosmos as just the sort of frontier investing that might provide the best returns this coming decade. I think it's really exciting that there are now different individuals or different corporations that are really you know, behind putting money and investment into the capital equipment necessary to go set up manufacturing in the United States. Seeing that come back, that there is that investment, that willingness to go invest in our infrastructure in the ability to make things is incredibly exciting to me. I feel like manufacturing is shifting from being kind of like a catch-all to being specific to certain industries. Relativity space, another Lux investment. We didn't invest in relativity space because they were building another rocket. There were plenty of rocket companies at the time. They were coming up with a new manufacturing process. And so, same thing here at Impulse. They're innovating not only on the propulsion and spacecraft itself, but how that spacecraft is made. Building a space economy requires two ingredients. First is a product, and then a way to manufacture it. These are separate challenges, and both are difficult and intertwined. You can build a complex product that works perfectly, but if you can't build it on the production line, it's useless. What space companies do is fuse an incredible array of skill sets and wisdom together to try to find a middle ground. What can we build in terms of the product, and how can we design it in such a way that it can be manufactured profitably at scale. That's ultimately the secret to these businesses, 
that offers them the long-term competitive advantage desired by investors. When you're designing something like Raptor, you're designing something like uh, Impulse's first vehicles here, the core is how do you iterate rapidly? How do you improve your designs? How do you uh, get the reliability way up? How do you get the cost way down? And what you end up finding is really the only way to do that is to go vertically integrate your manufacturing system. It's all about controlling your destiny, controlling your fate. If you're relying on a vendor who doesn't really care about what you're delivering on because what you're doing is a low volume as a development product, then they're not going to give you the time of day, they're not going to give you a low price to go do that, and then you're not aiming at the target anymore. In the name of that, you need to go and say, how can I go do this myself, or how can I go bring this in? You then go and do all the research, you find out what's necessary to build that product, what's necessary to set up that kind of a system, figure out the costs associated with it, and then go drive that forward in a direction that is fast. And it's, it's all about what equipment is available today, what are those opportunities, and that actually sets how you might design a product, just based on how quickly you can do it. New satellites, new applications, and the wide open cosmos. It's not a green field, but rather a black field of stars. It's the ultimate space, with the space industry expected to grow tremendously in the decades ahead. But the only way that market will thrive in America is if we have the domestic production capacity and talent to build the high precision machines that empower this market. The companies are trying, but it's the challenges on the ground and not up in the stars that need solving fast.